Hi everyone. So now we've looked at the purpose of the CPU and we've determined that its sole purpose is to execute instructions using the fetch decode execute cycle. Our next area of interest are the components within the CPU and their functions. In other words, the specific tasks that these specialized pieces of hardware perform. We're going to look at the control unit, the arithmetic logic unit, as well as the memory registers. Later on, we'll discuss how all this relates to a type of CPU architecture, namely the von Neumann architecture. However, all this will become clearer later on. So conceptually, the work of a CPU is pretty easy to understand. Firstly, the CPU fetches some data or an instruction. It then decodes it to work out what to do with it. And it then completes the instruction by doing some kind of calculation. Let's deepen our understanding by looking at the anatomy of the CPU. So in this diagram, you can see the components or parts which play a role in the fetch decode execute cycle. I'll now go through each component or part in turn with an overview of the task that they complete and then give you a bit more detail on how it is they perform this task. So let's start with the control unit. It's in overall control of the CPU and it controls the flow of data both inside and outside the CPU. It's the organizational force. The control unit controls the signals required to coordinate the running of the processor. And that includes the movement of data between components. So its function overall, as you may have guessed, is to execute program instructions using the fetch decode execute cycle. It's like the manager of a football team. It directs operations and moves parts around. You can read data or instructions for the players. And it does this as and when required. There are many registers inside each CPU and they perform different purposes. But why are they necessary? Well, hard drives, RAM and cache memory can't keep up with the speed at which the CPU operates. Processors, don't forget, are becoming ever faster. And we're now looking at processors that can complete trillions of cycles per second. So you need to have super fast memory chips that can keep up with these ever increasing demands to read and to write data. Right, let's get back to the program counter and remind ourselves that the CPU needs to perform calculations on data, but it also needs to know where the instructions or data are located. And this is where the PC comes in. The program counter contains the address or location of the next instruction to be executed. So the program counter basically queues up the instructions for them to be executed one after another. Let's now look at the bottom left hand side of this diagram and you can see the arithmetic and logic unit. The ALU is, well, fundamentally a really powerful calculator. It's the component that does all the number crunching. It will add, subtract, divide, multiply. It'll also carry out logical operations such as the AND, OR or NOT functions, as well as binary shifts. There's an additional component within the ALU called the accumulator. This again is a register, a low capacity, high speed log of memory. And the purpose of the accumulator is to store the intermediate results from the ALU. So for example, a result from one calculation may need to be stored to be part of a second or third calculation. And that's how the ALU serves its purpose. Let's now turn to the right hand side of our diagram and look at two more specialized registers. The memory address register, as the name suggests, is used to hold the whereabouts or address of either some data or an instruction. The memory data register, or MDR, holds the current data that's been fetched from memory or is about to be stored in memory. This is also known uh, as the memory buffer register. Also be aware that CPUs contain cache memory. Cache is a type of high-speed memory which is built into the processor. And typically, cache is used to store copies of frequently used data or instruction. So cache memory can be characterized as having fast read-write speeds, yet relatively low capacity. Now, typically, processors have three or more levels of cache memory. Level one tends to be the fastest, the smallest in capacity, and is built into the CPU itself. Level two cache will be slightly slower, slightly larger, and slightly further away, and so on. 
So these are the key components that you need to understand inside a CPU. Let's finish by distinguishing between the von Neumann architecture and any other type of CPU architecture, such as the Harvard. There is still intense debate over whether John von Neumann actually invented this, but we don't need to get involved in that historical argument too much. What's important is how the von Neumann architecture represented a, a quantum leap in the design of processors. And this discovery really paved the way for multi-purpose programmable machines like we use today, rather than the specialized computers uh, before the Second World War that were designed for one purpose alone. So the key characteristic you need to remember about the von Neumann architecture is that the same physical memory is used for both data and instructions. And there's a common bus for transferring data and instruction. Uh, buses, by the way, relate to the lines that connect the processor to other parts of the computer's architecture, like RAM or cache memory. So now we've covered the key components inside the CPU, and we've identified what makes the von Neumann architecture discrete and different from other architectures. In the next video, we'll look at the fetch, decode, execute cycle in more detail. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell if you want to be the first to see new content. Bye bye.